Hi again, everyone. Mike Morello from CBSI's Cover Tunes with yet another video feature for the week. Um, this time, also from Heroes Con 2019, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Clayton Crane, someone that I'd never spoken to before. He doesn't really do very many cons, and it was a real pleasure to see him at this one uh, and for him to give me about 20 minutes of his time to talk about his process and some of his art and some of his history and influences and those sorts of things. Um, it was a, a really great interview. Extremely nice guy. Also had a really long line for the weekend, signed everything people put in front of him. He was a real workhorse. He was working on art the whole time. He was signing books. He was at the table all day, every day through the whole show. It was, it was really great to see. Um, so if you've never met him before, um, you'll get a chance to in this video. Um, but I do recommend you trying to meet him in person. He's great, really soft spoken, humble guy. And uh, it was really fun to talk to him. So uh, without further ado, here is Clayton Crane. They're going to make a decision to go, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm not quoting it. It's like, they already, they would have wished you happy anniversary at all proper seasons. It's not like a big deal. It's pretty close. So. And uh, I was thinking about getting, uh, you know, more caricatures of my family. Uh, oh, that's cool. That is fun. Like your sort of people that you admire, or uh, just the random, random character guy. It's, it's just you know, has nothing to do with me, or we're just like in the at the convention. Yeah, right. And a good way to meet some new artists too. I mean, I I was doing that yesterday, just literally wandering around looking at names I've never heard of before just to see what they do. And what's interesting is some of the names I thought I'd never heard of, I do know their work. Oh, right. Just I never really pay attention to the names. I guess when it's not recurring or if it's not cover artists, I often just, I don't I don't ignore them. I just don't necessarily read through the Indicia page to see, to see oh, who right. did what. Like colorists, for instance, you know, like yeah. a bad colorist can really, you don't necessarily need to worry about that you do your own color, but... Um, and actually, do, you do you do a lot of your color for your books. You do that stuff digitally. Or, yeah, you used to, or or yeah, most like the the, uh, the covers I, I work on those uh, currently acrylic, right? Kind of fifty fifty, right? And then um, on the interiors, it's all digital. I'm, I'm doing twenty two pages. I'm not really. Built wow. and do 22 pages of acrylic interiors. No, no, definitely not. Not unless you're going to take two years to do the whole book. Yeah. It's unless forever. it was worth it. Yeah, you know. Doing something that was solid. Right. Well, I'm thinking of like those old Bill and Cabbage books, like Stray Toasters and stuff, where every panel is painted. Or uh, Dave McKean used to do that too. He used to just every, every single. I can't even imagine how long it must take. I don't know what media they used. Probably acrylic, maybe oil, I'm not sure. But it's hard yeah. to tell on the page, but that's, but that's an awful lot of work. Good morning, everyone. It is quarter after 10 here on Father's Day. More on that later. Just a reminder that Sunday attendees will be allowed in at 11 a.m. And if everything goes according to plan upstairs, advanced ticket holders could be allowed in as early as 10.30, so approximately 15 minutes from now. We hope you are all having an excellent Sunday. I look forward to an amazing third day here at Heroes Con. We are here on the third day of Heroes Con with Clayton Crane uh, at the Frankie's booth, and he's currently working on some commissions. And just thought we'd ask him a few questions um, for for all of us. For those of you that don't know Clayton, um, his first work was on Shadow Man in 1998, um, and worked into Spawn after that. I think if that's close to Spawn. Yeah, uh, and then after the the two, I think two sort of stints on Spawn, and he sort of branched out to a lot of other things, and probably most famous to us for Carnage, Carnage USA, Venom, maybe now Justice League Dark D covers that some of us are loving, um, a variety of things. Uh, X Force is a big one for a lot of people, yeah. and uh, and so just want to just chat. And find out a little bit about your process and sort of inspirations and things like that. So, um, I'm curious about how you developed your style. 
Well, I was a penciler for about five years, and um, I should go back a little bit. While I was learning to draw, I painted a lot, but then I gave it up so that I could focus on being a penciler. Mm -hmm. State and uh, after I got my first work being a penciler, I was a pencil for top for the first spawn for the uh, top coward. Uh, for my first book, I'm playing combat, playing comics mm -hmm. on Shadow Man. And after that, I, I got, I was, uh, I lost interest, and I, I found uh, that there was some digital painting going on, got into it, and uh, about three months after really making an effort, I was working at Marvel Moon. I, I had all that, those years of work the deadlines, right, the, uh, all the, you know, the, the actual art stuff. The job, the job part of it. Yeah. <laughs> less, less the art part of it, more the job part of it. Yeah. So it made it, uh, made the transition pretty quick. Yeah. It just became just the artwork was now, uh, you know, 12 hours, 16 hour days working, trying to, you know, those, I think four months into it, they're like, hey, you want to do an interior book? Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, yeah, of course. You know, that's like steady work, steady drawing constantly. Right. And the interior work is so forget so forgiving that you could just you could bust out a panel in no time and just move on. And or take your time or screw up the panel and not worry about it. Right. But on the covers, you know, those are you have to worry about everything. Yeah, so interior is it's at for learning. You prefer to do covers now, though? I, I, right now, covers are just a little easier on my schedule. Mm -hmm. And it allows me to, like, I normally don't go to cons, and so this year I've been able to go to about eight cons, possibly six or seven cons. So that's great. And there's people like, you're never over here. You never come to this con or this area. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, I've had, you know, it just happened in his mind. almost 20 years of working in yeah. the industry. To, no worries. Yeah, that, that's how we didn't move. So I'm seeing my shadow yeah, books, <laughs> you know, close to spawn, all this old, all this old stuff. So. It's probably weird to see that stuff have have collector value now after you've no, worked on it and you sort of, they're your babies when you're doing them, I assume. Yeah. And then, and they're still in the dollar bin so like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I think everyone's got their fair share of dollar bin books. Uh, there's a whole there's a whole row of Bill Sienkiewicz dollar bin books. Uh, I mean, if a, if a guy like that who's been around that long has dollar bin books, you know, yeah. so let me just make sure this is recording. So to make sure that it is. No, it was not. Why it was? Maybe it was. I'll take that back. Sorry about that. It's all right. Um, and actually, we sort of skipped a step. Um, when did you know you really wanted to do art? Um, were you young? Is it more recent than that? Or? Uh, let's see. Um, I was in. I was transitioned from fifth and sixth grade, and I think Robocop came up. <laughs> nice. Uh, I was doing a lot of like redesigning of those characters, like just the idea of robots. I might go a little further. It's all very much a mess of memory. I don't sit down and, you know, I haven't written a book about it or anything. So, <laughs> but, you know, I haven't really solidified my memory on it. But I, was, I work in class, I was drawing class, and one of the things, as far as getting into comic books, one of them was, one of the, my memories is I was in English class or social studies. I was uh, drawing some images and like, how can I justify this? <laughs> How can I justify this if I ever, yeah, my the teacher comes up to me and tells me to stop and I climb. And one of them was drawing comic books. Uh, when I saw Tom McFarlane's work, I was like, oh, I can do this on a monthly basis. Yeah. 22 pages. Oh, no, that's, I did. You know, five, uh, five pages a week. You know, we do like uh, 22 pages a month. Yeah, it's a legit, legitimate job. So I was pretty uh, pragmatic about it when I was young. So, was your family supportive of it when you started to do it, or, or yeah. Just, yeah, yeah? I mean, we're kind of kind of a scattered family. You know, we don't like a uh, uh, traditional family of being uh, you know, accountants and yeah. lawyers and yeah, doctors of the, of the community. <laughs> right. You know, 
here are the people where they're like, oh, these people moved in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there goes the neighborhood. Yeah. Crane's moved in. <laughs> yeah, no, I bet you they wish they, they didn't move in now. Now that you know who you are. Definitely become a, a household name over those years. But, um, so, would you say that you're influenced by other artists? Uh, or have been? Well, obviously, Todd, a little bit, I would assume, just from an admiration standpoint. But were there other artists that you tried to emulate? Um, or try to avoid emulating. Let's see. I didn't care so much for uh, Bert Hogarth, that drawing class. You know? Right. I was like, it's too round. It's way too round. Right. And it's just much as, as as far as that goes. Yeah. I know people love him. People love learning from him. You know, just being honest about it. Yeah. I loved uh, Bridgman's work. Um, the, uh, uh, yeah, but like, you know, Sylvester, Sylvester, Jim Lee, yeah, all those guys, and Jay Lee, and they're, uh, they're all with following, and, you know, uh, Tony Daniels work, and all that stuff. Absolutely, you know, very, very fun, very, uh, very much worth, you know, that's one thing, is like, getting into the realistic stuff, and like, don't get too realistic, start pulling it back, have yeah. fun. Yeah, make it, make it a little bit, stylize it a little bit, make it yours. Yeah, or make it make it so it's it's if it's a if I was just doing realistic photographs, I would feel like they were they just don't like I would not read a comic book that had these photographs. That's true. Yeah, yeah. No artistic interpretation of what you're reading. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's so much so much uh, variety in the actual drawing. I agree, and I love Jay Lee's work specifically for that. It's just there is nothing like a Jay Lee piece. People have tried to copy Jim Lee, you know, all the guys that you mentioned, those those guys get copied a lot, and, and sometimes it, it gets muddled up and sort of buried underneath all the artists that have done the same sort of thing. But Jay, Jay just stands out. You see a Jay Lee cover, you can see it from across the room, you know, it says, even if you don't know beforehand, his name is on it, it's just got that style to it. I feel like your, your work does now, too. I mean, definitely... Um, since Carnage, anyway, I think everything from Carnage onward I can probably recognize as yours. Um, I really love what you're doing on the on the Justice League Dark books. Those are really cool covers, especially your Swamp Thing work. It's yeah. really, really cool. Um, you have a, I think you have like a solo Swamp Thing cover coming. Isn't that, isn't that the next one? The next B cover? Let's see. Uh, yeah. It was just the Wonder Woman one last, I think. Yeah. And then uh, after that, I think it's Man Bat. Is it Tana? Yeah, she's last. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking forward to that one most. Yeah. Um, what, what work that you've done in your career are you most proud of? Uh, let's see. You know, that Carnage stuff I really enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, starting with Carnage. Uh, I'm really proud of uh, X Force. You know, I actually liked uh, uh, for, uh, Volumes Five books. Yeah, it allowed me to get through all of them. There's uh, we did a uh, Brian. We worked on Brian. Illustrated all of it. I mean myself. Then uh, and then we did 4001, and that one I was I was pretty proud of because it was there was so much where it enjoyed. Me so much. Yeah. Because there was so much 3D work that I started incorporating into it and drawing with 3D. Um, you know, painting my own. Uh, so when we're working in 3D, I paint backgrounds two-dimensionally and wrap my 3D work. Oh, wow, that's cool. That I would create myself. Right. All that I created myself. And it was fun. That I would say is that. And I don't, I don't see it very often. But that's cool. I'm, I, you mentioned X Force too. I think you are probably, probably my favorite X twenty three cover. That's tough. That Delato is pretty awesome. But there's a um, that homage to Underworld. Oh, doing that one. Yeah. Oh my god, that, that cover is incredible. Very difficult to find cover. By the way, if you ever judge, hunt one yeah. down. You probably have one somewhere. Yeah, I probably do. I thought, yeah, that's a great cover. Well, that whole homage set. I think you did a few of those too. Yeah, we did. Uh, we were done. That's to Don. Like Dracula. Yeah. Dracula. Um, sort of Lost Boys one of there, maybe? Lost Boys. Oh, um, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I understand. 
But, uh, yeah, and then, um, what is, what is that last one? The, uh, the, the movie with the Tom Cruise. What's that? Oh, uh, Oh, yeah, I remember that one too. Those, are, I mean, that whole run is great. I think a lot of a lot of collectors really try to go after those. Get the whole set. It's just a really good representation. Of, I think of your work. Um, I obviously see a lot of people wanting carnage venom things from you for the most part, but I mean, yeah. I think that. Um, no, I love that work. Some of the other work is done is more more my speed, but. Um, Let's see. Um, any future projects that you're working on that you could talk about? Hmm. I'm allowed to talk about. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about, it, but I'm working on the fourth bonds. Fourth three thousand one. Oh, three hundred one. I mentioned four thousand. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. It's, it's okay. Three hundred and one cover. For a spawn, go on. We doing some materials for that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, cool. I'll there. probably actually do. I'll probably do that in uh, acrylic also. Yeah. In two years. That's great. Yeah. It should be, it should be interesting. I like that everyone's focused on 300 right now because of all the crazy covers coming out for us. I just the fact that it's a milestone thing. Yeah, I've got Campbell on there, so you see that. But that's that's the issue where there's just a bunch of people doing doing different pieces of it. Is that yeah? That's pretty cool. That's so, cool. that's uh, awesome. And uh, yeah, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. It sounds awesome. Do you have a? I'm oh, sorry. Oh, I'm just <laughs> trying to make that thing open. Yeah, it didn't work out too hard. <laughs> so, oh, go ahead. No, it's fine. Uh, are you? Um, do you have a, a, a specific sort of regimen when you really sit down to do work? Do you, do you make sure everything's quiet? Do you turn music on? Do you how do you how do you set up to to work? Well, I mean, obviously here you don't really have much of a choice. Yeah. There under the bright lights. I have two places to work. And one's on the couch, and one is at a drawing table. Yeah. So on the couch, I'm just sitting there with my family drawing, working uh, with a like a waking companion. I just work on like a. 16 inch screen. That's it. Um, the keyboard is very, very clean. Yeah. And then, uh, and then the, in working at the uh, drawing table, that's about it. And, you know, try to keep all your stuff clean. And, <laughs> and over time, as you see the, the project work go, move on, the, uh, the room is just a mess. You know? Yeah. Part, yeah. Means you're doing it right. <laughs> yeah. It means I'm not paying attention to my you know, surroundings. And just working on, so. Yeah. Is there uh, is there anything you haven't worked on that you would wish you could work on? Yeah, yeah I've been really trying to get on working on some. Uh, I don't know. Say, I don't say I'm really trying, but in my mind, I think very highly of working on uh, like Spider Gwen or. Uh, the Deadpool, the uh, Gwenpool, something, something a little more feminine. Yeah, uh, just to have a new, have them do. You know, it'll give me a reason to draw women on a regular basis because most of the books I have, yeah, you know, it's all men, <laughs> it's all faceless creatures. You know, right. Um, well, you can tell that you. I mean, to me, anyway, that's why I love that extra three cover, just because you can tell how much you. Sort of pop for that cover. Like you really wanted that cover to be something. I don't know. I think big. I mean, it's, it's pretty recognizable. It's, it's obviously worth a lot of money for a reason. <laughs> yeah, it's just a nice looking image all together. You know? It is. Uh, all right, that that composition, that underworld composition, is just you know, pretty solid. Yeah. Do you actually use that as a tool sometimes too? Photographs, things like that, uh, things you've seen, sort of compositionally or. Uh, or is it yeah. Straight out of your brain. Well, I do like photographs as far as like you'll see an alleyway or the top of the and you know, just see these uh, combinations as far as that goes. I, as that goes, I don't necessarily care for finding reference as far as where they illustrate. Like you have to do, you have to design your illustration and then your right. Because otherwise, you may uh, end up inadvertently taken from 
something that you don't mean to. Yeah, yeah. A little too strong. Sure. That makes sense. Do you ever run into that accidentally where someone's mentioned to you, hey, this looks a little bit like this? Yeah, um, sometimes. Uh, well, I, I went on the internet once back in 2007, and after some kind of run, I'm like, somebody's like, well, this is uh, clearly a ripoff this time. I've never seen it ever <laughs> in my life. Um, and uh, I mean, how many covers of somebody jumping? Spider-Man jumping into the boots. So. Right, before it looks exactly like somebody else's. Yeah. You got 60 years of that stuff floating around the world. Or then I'm like, I'm clearly ripping off these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Not this one. You got it wrong. Yeah. Totally wrong. But that'll be the way you get people riled up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know that you have a lot of work to get done today and it's the last day of the con, but um, is there anything else you want to tell fans that uh, anything else you want to tell just uh, art of maybe aspiring artists what they might do to get in to this medium or uh, just really anything you want to plug or... I don't need to plug anything I'm more of uh, you know just kind of a congor at the moment which, uh, but as far as telling people like advice the one kind of something that kind of runs in my mind is to is to just work on your initiative, starting and finishing projects, and don't think of yourself as like breaking into the industry, but think of yourself as being as working hard enough to then be brought into the industry, you know, because the idea of breaking in seems like you had no reason to be there, right, at no place, you're right. out of sort, and so think of it as once you are a capable of working in the industry, it will just pull you in. So, you know, or as a, I think I'm, a better analogy, like it would open the door. Yeah, you don't have to break it. That's great. I've never heard anyone say it like that before. That's, that's really cool. Um, well, again, thank you very much for all of your awesome work and for your time today. And um, with that, CBSI, Clayton Crane. Sunday, last day of Heroes Con, and here's a little glimpse of In Process. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And there you had Clayton Crane, everyone. Um, as you can see, he was really great to talk to. If you're interested in more info on him, you can hit up his Instagram, at Clayton Crane, and... Uh, Again, I highly recommend you trying to meet him if he's ever at a con near you. I hope you enjoyed this week's video feature from Cover Tunes from yours truly and CBSI and Simple Man's. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great week.